Hey, welcome to the Backyard Professor Responds videos. A patron of mine, Cisco Cariga7947, asked me to look into a video by Zion Media run by Shane Wagner, I believe is the, that's his name, uh, on a subject of the discovery of Nephi's temple here in the Americas. And this this group, this gentleman of this group, claims that he has the proof, and it was quite intriguing to me, the title, and I thought, why not? Take a look. So I did. This is the, these are the gentlemen, Shane Baldwin, I believe is running the show, at least he was the uh, moderator at this point. This gentleman up at the top right Lance, he is the gentleman who is presenting the proof of Nephi's temple being discovered, and it is in Monte Alban. And then these other two gentlemen are adding commentary, etc. And so this is this is the theme that they're going to talk about. I'd like to respond to that. Let me give you his opening. Uh, thought. I will share the screen here real quick, and you can get it from, yeah, here we go. We'll let him do the talking. There we go. Let's share this. Okay. And for me, I've never really cared about Book of Mormon ge geography. I told people I don't care if it took place in a different realm or if it never took place at all, and it was just a channeled work. I believe it anyways, but I'm starting to realize that most people need to have evidence in order to support their belief. And so <clears throat> as we've got as we've gotten into this Book of Mormon geography, Lance is showing me some things and I'm going, well, those look like places from that uh, they they date to the proper times. They look like something that's important. And uh last I checked, I'm not seeing these things in Tennessee. And so Lance is really he's he's read your comments. He's read your comments, and he's ready to rip. He is ready to talk about where Nephi's temple is, and he is going to make the argument, like, like an attorney makes an argument in the courtroom, that Nephi's temple is Monte Elban. So with that, Lance, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, so that's the basis of their argument. This is what Lance is going to refer to. Now, after listening to the video, I am not at all convinced of this truly astonishingly, outrageously uh, incredible claim. Um, not, not, not only is it extraordinary, it is absolutely over the top astounding but it dawned on me listening through this video that these gentlemen are arguing insider Mormon materials. This is a video of Mormons for Mormons. And they put it on YouTube because what they're doing is they are challenging the site in Tennessee that the Heartlanders have presented as the Temple of Nephi. And this gentleman claims, Lance claims, that it is down in Monte Alban in Mesoamerica instead. Now, the remarkably interesting thing that this gentleman does, Lance, is he has said there is evidence of a continental look from the Book of Mormon. The basis for the Book of Mormon, the land south and the land northward, etc., their travels, their wars, etc., of the Nephites and Lamanites, is an entire continental interpretation. And he says it is ludicrous for the Heartlanders to be arguing with the Mesoamerican sites for the Book of Mormon, and it is ludicrous for the Mesoamericanists in the Mormons to argue against the Heartlanders because it is both. And this is what this gentleman is trying to present is his continental model of the Book of Mormon geography. But the claim in the title is 
that he has found the book of uh, the book, I apologize, the city, the temple of Nephi, and with proof. And that is what convinced me to at least give the video a shot. Take a look. And I watched the entire video from front to back all the way through. And that word proof means he's got something seriously significant. Unfortunately for him, he has absolutely nothing. Here's the problem. And I did leave several comments on the video as I was watching through it. The main problem with this approach is they're, they're showing some terrific Mesoamerican archaeology, ruins and artifacts, the Zapotex, the Mixtecs, the Toltecs, etc. And it really does help. It helped me appreciate some of the grandeur that we here in North America basically ignore about the native peoples of the Americas. And so in that respect, this was a truly excellent effort. And he has other videos also. Of course, he is trying to tie it with the Book of Mormon. So, But as far as just appreciating the ancient American heritage, it's really impressive. It's very well done. It's nice. He's done, obviously, a boatload of work without question. And his slides are beautiful. They're gorgeous. They are really impressive. These people who lived here were impressive. Now, for the bad news, you can't establish, and, and this is kind of a logical approach, you can't establish the city of Nephi. You can't establish that this exact particular building is the temple that Nephi built unless Nephi is a bona fide blood and human, flesh and blood human. They haven't even established Nephi is more than a fictional character in the Book of Mormon, archaeologically. It's just a word in the Book of Mormon. It's a name of a person in the Book of Mormon. That's it. That's all we've got. So without Nephi, you don't get his temple. <clears throat> now, he specifically claimed he has found the temple that Nephi built. I get it. He's talking to the Heartlanders who also believe in the Book of Mormon within the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And so he's trying to persuade the Heartlanders that the particular location in Tennessee that they apparently claim is the Temple of Nephi isn't nearly as good as this one he has discovered in Monte Abarn. And that's his argument. He is arguing with other already believing Mormons, and he is comparing and contrasting evidences between their two models. Well, as a non-believer now, my take on this is a little bit different than what it would have been if I was an apologist. Number one, you, you did not establish Nephi being real in any manner. And therefore, this temple that you found, and he does show some interesting uh, alignments with the cosmos, and he does show some interesting ideas of tombs that were found in caves underneath the city. He, sh he shows a few archaeological things with various headdresses of the archaeological remains and, and uh, materials like this, but that does not establish that this is Nephi's temple. If there is no actual archaeological evidence for the people, then the buildings aren't theirs either. It's just simply a, a statement of logic. And when I say establish archaeologically the people, we and I've used this example before, and I will continue using it because it is so exquisitely powerful. We actually really do have a direct archaeological bullseye and proof, if you want to use that word. I hesitate to, but in this biblical archaeological context, which we have, 
I'm almost comfortable saying, yeah, this is proof. If it's not proof, we are 98% certain that King Hezekiah of ancient Israel lived because we have the archaeological discovered materials and remains of the king of Assyria who attacked Hezekiah. And the Assyrian invasion where he wiped out all the northern tribes, but he did not capture Jerusalem. But we've got this, I think it's an octagonal or hexagonal cylinder uh, you know, on all sides that's written in cuneiform. And, and it is the writing of King Sennacherib. And he really did mention Hezekiah, whom he caged like a bird in Jerusalem. He describes his destruction of the northern kingdoms and taking them away into captivity, etc. We also now, bonus material, have from the biblical materials, the description from Hezekiah's point of view about this evil Sennacherib Assyrian army marching down against him, and it terrified him out of his wits. So we have it from both sides. Interestingly enough, the description of the siege of Lachish, the second strongest city in Israel, is also discovered archaeologically to exact match the descriptions of that siege in Lachish, including the skeletal remains of the poor people who did not survive. We found the arrowheads. We found the sling stones. We still have the ramp that the Assyrians built going up to the wall of Lachish it dates accurately. The burn layer, which Sennacherib said, I completely took the inhabitants, killed most of them, took the rest with me, and I burned the city. He burned everything he, he destroyed. Well, that's this is a threefold prong on Hezekiah. That's what I mean. That's what... This is the level of evidence that we have to have to historically verify flesh and blood people in antiquity if we are going to make the kinds of claims Mormons make for their Book of Mormon, because pretty much everything about the Book of Mormon now is truly extraordinary. That there's nothing ordinary here, including the angel Moroni and the material it was written on, the golden plates and the stories of the golden plates and the method of the translation from the really interesting and yet to be discovered language, the Reformed Age. Everything about the Book of Mormon is extraordinary. So, for someone to say we have found the actual temple that Nephi himself built and we have the proof, you really have to have this level of archaeological evidence or historical written evidence specifically naming Nephi as the man who came from across the sea with his family, Lehi and his mother, Sariah, and his brothers, Laman and Lemuel. Folks, that is what every Mormon wishes they had. And that is the level that they would need before they can just casually toss off a title like this video did, saying, oh, yeah, by the way, we found the, uh, <laughs> the temple that Nephi himself built, and we have the proof. He presented nothing of the kind that is anywhere in the same ballpark as the Hezekiah archaeological materials. I honestly, 99.9 .9 remain completely unconvinced about this. In the course of describing this, I'm going to add this real quick. This is what he called, this is the temples of Monte Alban. It's east facing. It's got two rooms, 
it's got two columns. He says these are very similar to Solomon's temple. And he says it's the only known east-facing two-room, two-column temple in Mesoamerica. That's not true. I looked up some articles. There's other temples, even in Monte Alban, that have that orientation. So he's fudging here. And and then, of course, from the Book of Mormon, Nephi, I built a temple after the manner of Solomon. It wasn't nearly as grand and didn't have many precious things, but the manner of the construction was like Solomon, and he finds something, and he's going to identify. Even though we have never seen Solomon's temple, we actually don't know what it looked like. We do have written descriptions of it, though. That's a fair, that's a fair assessment, etc. But simply because you find parallels, does not give you, <laughs> I, I apologize, I'm not trying to mock anyone. These guys put a lot of effort into this video, but just because you find a few parallels to buildings does not give you the right to say, hey, I have proof that Nephi himself built this temple. No, that dog won't hunt, man. Okay, and another thing these guys showed that I thought was quite intriguing, very interesting, is this, the hieroglyphics-like writing at Monte Alban. Now, they're saying this is the city of Nephi. Of course, I mean, the this is where the temple of Nephi was built, right? And Monte Alban has many of the earliest examples of Mesoamerican script in the Americas. And you see on the uh, right there, the Mayan glyphs. And on the left, there's other interesting different Mayan glyphs on various stone stela, on columns, on walls, etc. It's a very, very intriguing language to be sure. But what you don't see is you don't see Hebrew and you don't see Reformed Egyptian. Now, lest you think I'm carping, understand this writing, these hieroglyphic writings at Monte Alban is the same place where he says Nephi immediately went to and built his temple. Now, what language did Nephi work in? Hebrew and Reformed Egyptian. He actually describes way later in the book, they would have written in the Hebrew, but they changed that also. So that we don't have any evidence of the language. And here, Monte Alban, a huge city, 25,000 people plus, a few uh ne'er-do-well, ragtag travelers, maybe 30 or 40 come in, and in the heart of the already existing city, builds that kind of a temple and builds up the complex. Uh, that's Technically, I'm misstating something because Monte Alban wasn't founded until 600 BC at the original. So, But there is no evidence of a Nephite or a Lamanite civilization at all, either. And so this is where this video lacks. It honestly did not convince me in any way to take the Book of Mormon seriously as ancient history. And I'm not trying to offend. I'm just simply saying, you Mormon enthusiasts, you have got to do better than this. Seriously. If you're going to make this kind of a claim, you really do need outside scholarship helping you verify that, yes, indeed, this building was made by a man named Nephi, I mean, if a Michael Coe or a David H. Kelly or a Linda Sheely, when she was alive, would have helped identify Nephite or Lamanite remains and artifacts, etc., that would do wonders for you. But for an enthusiastic Mormon believer to say, yes, this specific type of building or this exact city, we have parallels. Therefore, this is proof of the Book of Mormon. Oh, no. No, you aren't even in the same realm of reality yet to get anywhere near proof. So thanks for watching the BYP Responds. I've got a lot more of these coming up. Appreciate all your support.